hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, it's part 10 of the new excavator build. Well, it's hard to believe that we're here at part 10, but here we are. Guys, there's a lot to cover again today, so I don't want to talk too much. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to make the cab light covers and the cab lights. Let's head over to the bench and I'll show you what I have in mind. Well, these cab lights can be a little tricky, but I'm going to show you how to do it. And what we're going to start off with is a piece of stock. I'm making my cab lights out of walnut and this is three eighths of an inch thick and nine sixteenths of an inch wide. Uh, you want to make it extra long to give you some room to work with. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this over to the table saw. We are going to set the height of our blade at five sixteenths of an inch and we will set our fence so that the blade strikes one sixteenth of an inch inside of the width of our piece. Um, that will leave one sixteenth inch wall on the top and the sides. We are going to run this through for a pass and on both sides and then continue to move our fence until we get the middle nibbled away. Now I will caution you, do not put extra pressure because if you should bolt your zero clearance insert or your table saw insert, it is possible for the blade to come up through the top of your work. Also guys, please do not use your fingers to push this through. Use a push pad, push block, push stick, whatever you can so that your fingers are not on top of this as you're running it through the saw. And what you end up with is the channel that you will use in order to make your cab light cover. So the first thing we're going to do is take this over to the little miter box and we will cut two pieces that are 13 sixteenths of an inch long. Well, if we look here on the plans, we can see that it calls for a 3 8 radius. Um, but we're not going to do that. We are going to use our actual cab in order to get that profile on there. So what I've done, it's very difficult to see on the walnut, but I have measured in 3 8 of an inch from the end and 1 16th down from the top. And we are going to line that up with our cab and use the actual profile of our cab in order to trace that radius. Uh, because if you remember, we just sanded this by hand or by, uh, by the belt sander. So by doing it this way, we will be able to get a pretty close fit of our lights onto our cab. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to very carefully take this over to the scroll saw and I will cut that out um, and then we'll do a test fit on our cab. And once you get those shaped and you've tested them against your cab and you're happy with the fit, we need to do the second radius, which is right here. It shows a 13 30 second radius. So we can use a 13 16 circle template and draw that radius here onto our light covers. And just like before, you can either sand it at the sander, you can sand it by hand, or we'll cut it at the scroll saw. And once you get them shaped, you can just place your round over on the top corners. And at this point, we can glue these onto the top of our cab here. You want to make sure that they're level with the top. So for that, um, these bars or trim pieces that were added are 1 16th of an inch thick. This uh, top surface right here at the back, this is 1 16th of an inch thick. So you can just place a flat surface here, line it up, and glue it in place. And once it's said and done and dried, um, it will be level with the rest of the cab. Well, making the cab lights is not video worthy. It is nothing more than cutting the pieces to the dimensions you need and using sandpaper on a piece of MDF, putting a 45 chamfer all the way around it. Um, we will now glue it in place or glue them in place inside of our light covers here. And with that, our lights are done. I think they look great myself, but I might be biased. Guys, it's now time to put this aside 
and we're going to turn our attention to the boom arm body. Now, this piece looks somewhat simple, but there's a lot going on here. And it all starts off with some photocopies of the pattern. Well, just before starting this build on the show, I made this project, which is my revamped and modernized light table. And guys, this is the more practical use for this. And what I use it for mostly in the shop is to join patterns together. Um, what I mean by that is the average home photocopier or flatbed scanner will not do a photocopy that is big enough to house these arms. So you have to do it in two sections. So an easy way to join them together is by using a light box. You can fire it up, you can see right through the pattern, and you can line up your edges perfectly. And once you get everything lined up, you just tape it together, and then you will have your full size pattern. So going off the plans, I figured out the size of the blank that I wanted to cut. I've cut the blank and I've attached the side profile pattern to our blank. The very first thing you want to do while this is all still square, before we start taking away any of that squareness, is we want to drill the three holes that it calls for, the 3 16th and the 2 1 8th holes. So we'll do that over at the drill press. Well, at this point, I want to cut the perimeter. Now, there's several ways that you can do this. Um, you can cut it at the bandsaw and then sand it up to the line. You can use a fret saw if you like. It's a lot of work. It's one and three quarters of an inch thick. I'm going to try the scroll saw with a brand new number seven PGT reverse tooth blade. And I'm going to do some test cutting over in this area here and see how the scroll saw reacts. This is almost to the maximum that the scroll saw can take. This is one and three quarters of an inch. So it may not work well for me. If it doesn't work, I'm going to hit the band saw. But let me try the scroll saw first and I'll let you know how that works. And with that, that is the side profile pretty much cut. Um, I've said it before about scroll saws, and I will say it again. Just because your scroll saw says that it can take a maximum of two inch thick material, that does not mean that it's the best choice or the best tool of choice. And when I first started off with this, it was going rather well. And I have to tell you, this was excruciatingly slow. And even though this looks pretty good, this piece is trash and I will be um, getting rid of it and recutting it using a bandsaw and sanding up to the line. And let me show you why. The thickness of the stock causes some problems with the blade. I was afraid of this, but I had to try my own stubbornness. So at some point in time, the blade was losing tension. And although I stopped it quite frequently and checked the tension, it didn't save my piece. And I'll just show you what I mean here. So if I put a square up against that and shine a light in behind it, can you see that gap? That is not even close to being a square cut. Um, if I bring it up further along, in my mind, that's not acceptable. Not, not, even, not even a little bit. So this entire piece to me is junk. Um, I will try to salvage out of it what I can for other parts of the model, but at this point, I'm not even gonna carry on with this. I'm gonna go and re-photocopy the pattern, redo everything I've done, make a new piece of stock, and I'm gonna cut it out at the bandsaw and then sand up to the lines using the belt sander and the oscillating drum. Well, I've peeled off my pattern after cutting my second piece, and I'm just marking our top profile. Now, if we look at the drawing, we can see that the entire uh, thickness of the arm all the way across, for the most part, is one inch. So I'm going to draw a line three-eighths of an inch in from both sides all the way along. And because our thickness of our piece is one and three-quarters, that should leave us with one inch remaining in the middle. Now I've also transferred 
the marks here from our pattern and I have cut the small section of our top profile to use as a template. That will mark our taper. So the very first thing I want to do is very carefully, I want to cut down on this cross line here, right here, down until I meet where our taper ends at three eighths of an inch. And then we will do the exact same thing on the other side. Now the next thing that I want to do is I'm going to take this over to the bandsaw and I'm just going to rough trim this taper. Then we'll come back in here with chisels and we'll clean it up. All right, and with both of those trimmed up, I am going to take it over to the bandsaw. We will trim this line right here on both sides so that it is one inch thick. Now, I'm just gonna trim it part way down and then I think I'll take it down the rest of the way using a block plane. And once you get it pretty much the way you like it, I hate to break the news to you, but there really is no easy way here uh, to fine tune it other than hand sanding. So um, again, some sandpaper on a block of MDF will help you to get in here and make a nice transition between these uh, two surfaces. So there's one more thing to do here on this piece. Uh, once you get it sanded and you're happy with the shape of it, and that is we need to trim this end here. So we can see on the print here that this little end nub is actually only three quarters of an inch wide. So what we need to do is take uh, the edges here that we've already cut, carry our line across just like that on both sides. And then we're going to use a handsaw just like we did before. And we're going to cut in one eighth of an inch on either side. Once we get that done, we can mark our 1 8 inch in on the end and then cut straight down through with a handsaw to take off that one section. And once you're done with the shaping, you should end up with something that looks like this. Now, we are not even close to, be, uh, to being finished on that piece, but I at least want to do a little bit of a dry fit just to make sure that it fits properly. So this piece will sit in here, and although this is the wrong size dowel, it's just for dry fit purposes. There we go. And this is how this will eventually get mounted. Um, but for now, we don't need to mount it. We have a lot more to do on this arm. Well, I'm just going to backtrack just a little bit now that that boom arm is done. And we will talk about that railing, that handrail. If you remember from last week's show, um, I made and bent the handrail. However, I wasn't happy with it because the clamps left noticeable indentations and flat spots. So since then, I have made another one using masking tape as the clamping method. So let's just see how that one came out. Okay, this one is much better. Um, there is a com some compression in the tight corners, but I fully expected that. But in the rest of the rail, it's round and smooth. So this will be our final rail. Um, I will cut it to its length and glue it in place. And now, honestly, the cab is complete. And I'm much more pleased with that outcome. So. It just goes to show, guys, if you aren't happy with a piece, there is no shame, no harm, no foul in remaking it until you are happy. Um, so don't settle and you'll be a lot happier with your model in the end. So the next pieces that we're going to move to will be these boom arm ends, number one and number two. Now, if we look at the pattern here, um, I don't see any difference in them. Their end profiles are exactly the same. The only difference is their length. And if we look at this boom arm subassembly, we can see that they get glued together into sort of one piece. 
there, there is no advantage to making these pieces separately. So instead of making them by one eighth inch stock and making a total of two each, I am going to make them out of a quarter inch stock and cut a rabbit in one side and then cut the actual piece itself. We will cut them all together in order to keep them the same so that all of our profiles and all of our holes line up. So we will do that with a marking template. We will mark them out and cut them on the scroll saw. It's really not rocket science here, but we will get these two pieces made and then dry fit them in place. And with that, those pieces are done. There is a chamfer on this end right here, and that was just sanded by hand using uh, sandpaper on MDF, as you've seen me do throughout this build. So now we're going to fit them and glue them onto um, our boom, but alignment can be a bear as these holes have to line up perfectly. So here's a tip for you. Use the drill bit that you drilled them with and just use the shank of the drill bit to align the pieces. It'll fit perfectly and you know that they're exactly aligned because the drill bit will not have any kind of deviations and we can glue and clamp those in place. Once it's all dried up, just remove the drill bit. Well, at this point, there is a whole plethora of pieces that we can make. Uh, the center pivot disc, the center pivot disc number two. Um, we could make the cylinder sleeves, the base rings, the retaining discs. Uh, these are just simple pieces and I've already shown you in this tutorial how to make those um, using a small bolt and you can spin them in your drill press to shape them. You can get these pieces made. Now truth be told I turn mine on the lathe because that's my preferred method. If you have a lathe you can do that as well but they're very easily done with a cordless drill and a bolt as I've shown you previously here on the, in this series. So with those being done, we want to turn our attention now to the boom ram cylinder and as well the dipper ram cylinder. Now there is a bit of a problem here and let me show you what this is. This is four and seven eighths of an inch long. This is four and a quarter. Now I don't know the depth of this uh, hole here but there is a 3 16 diameter hole drilled all the way through this 3 8 dowel. And if we take a normal size 3 16 drill bit and hold it up there, even if I had it just barely connected in the chuck, there is no way that I am reaching the depth that I require for any of these pieces. And for that, I have a much longer 3 16 drill bit. Now it's not the best quality drill bit in the world, but it will get me the depth that I need. I'll just have to drill a little slower. That's all to prevent wobbling. So all we're going to do is we're going to cut these dowels to length and over at the drill press, we will very carefully mark the center and drill down through them the required amount as we scale it off the plans. Just take your time. Remember that these are the piston cylinders. So if you are not happy with the way that it looks, if you are not happy with how centered your 3 16 diameter hole is, make a new one. The worst case scenario is you are losing a five inch piece of dowel. Well, it took several tries, but I've got two of them now for our boom ram cylinder. Um, that longer 3 16 diameter bit really loves to deflect and you can see here where it's blowing out the side of this one dowel. So keep your fingers away from it while you're drilling it. Now what we're going to do is if we look at the drawing we need to put um, a little bit of a rabbit on this that is 11 16 of an inch deep. It will make it so that eventually this will just be 5 16 in diameter. So on our solid end where there is no hole, I've placed several rounds of masking tape. That is to protect it. And I am going to chuck this up in a cordless drill and using some sandpaper on a piece of MDF 
I am going to slowly sand this so that I get the proper rabbet that I want. Um, what we need to get eventually is for these half inch long cylinder sleeves to slide over top. So that is the ultimate goal here. And there's no other solution here other than to just take it slow and sand away until you get the diameter that you need. And you end up with something that looks like this. Now, truth be told, um, I was sanding it down, having a hard time getting a clean edge here. So I very carefully with a fine razor saw uh, cut around there and then I used a utility knife or an X-Acto knife. You can use carving knives or whatever you have and I gently carved this down to get that clean sort of shoulder there. Then one of these pieces here, which is our cylinder sleeves, that is going to end up getting glued on there and you end up with something that looks just like this. Now we did take a little bit of damage here at the end, but we are going to end up carving this off at this point. Um, if we look here at the plans, we can see a flattened area that is 7 sixteenths of an inch long. I am going to carve that off by hand and uh, then we can drill that 1 8 diameter hole that is in it and this piece here should be, <laughs> I hope, finished. And after a little bit of hand carving to fit this um, cylinder sleeve on and to get our little taper here at the back end, we've also done some hand sanding around here to get that round over. You end up with the um, outer body of our boom ram cylinder. So we have those two done. We need to repeat the exact same process with the dipper ram cylinder. Just follow the dimensions on the plans and you should be just fine. Um, I don't think we need another video of it, so I'm going to get that finished up and then we can move on. And unfortunately, that's all the time that we have for this week. We've made some good progress, guys, but those cylinders, I have to say that in all the experience that I have with Toys and Joys patterns, this is the first time that I have ever had to use a longer bit. The pistons are a little longer than what they normally are on the other models, but it doesn't really matter. Just the key to success with those is for starters, take your time. It's a very slow drilling process. And once that 3 16th of an inch diameter bit gets down inside that dowel, you're you're, you're drilling end grain, which is a tough drill to begin with. And then on top of that, you've got the heat of that bit going further and further down inside a tough drilling job. It just causes problems. Eventually it will deflect that bit. So be sure to back the bit out repeatedly over and over throughout the entire um, drilling process to clean that hole out and let it run at the top of the bit to pull all those shavings out from inside of the hole. Drill maybe one eighth of an inch down, then clear out the hole. One eighth of an inch down, clear out the hole. I know it sounds slow, I know it sounds tedious, and it is, but in order to get the results that you'll be happy with, that's what you need to do. So the key to success is slow, slow, slow. Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in this week. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. You click that bell and then you won't miss the notifications of future episodes of the show. I honestly hope that you're enjoying the content. I really hope that you're following along at home, guys, because this is just more fun than I should legally be allowed to have. And I hope that you're doing your own model at your house in your shop. And guys, more importantly, honestly, I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.